Everybody, no guest Nico here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to my BMW i3 series. Picked up this car a few months ago and I want to highlight one of the things that you can do to improve the functionality of this car. Now, this car does have a range extender, and what that does, the range extender allows you to continue driving even after your battery is depleted. Once you get down to six and a half or seven percent of uh, capacity left in your battery. The gasoline engine turns on, runs a generator to provide power to the battery that will provide power to the electric drive motors. Very similar to the Chevy Volt. The only difference is the BMW had put a very small engine. It's a two-cylinder, 600cc engine. Doesn't have a lot of power. Therefore, not really meant to drive on all the time. So if you're looking for a car like this that's going to be primarily run on gasoline, I would suggest a different car. So anyway, what happens when the gasoline engine turns on? You have a lot less power. If you're going uphill on the highway, you won't even be able to do 70 miles an hour. I tested it myself. I ran the battery completely out, went on the highway, going up a hill that's getting close to my exit. I got down to like 62 miles an hour before I got to the top of the hill, and I was able to speed back up and get up the speed. but it it was bad. It was bad. I don't suggest this. You won't have any power on the highway to accelerate. Uh, if you were in a jam, you just can't. There's no power there. I don't accept. I don't. I don't suggest running strictly on gas on the highway. But never fear. There is a way to make it better. Uh, there you do need a app. You need a OBD2 dongle, which is uh, you're going to use for programming. So they call this coding. You can code the range extender to be able to come on anytime you want, as long as it's under 75%. Now, why does BMW limit you to be able to turn that on just at 75% or less? Well, they don't want you overcharging the battery. So with the range extender running, if you turn it on at like 99%, it's gonna put power into the battery, you're going to overcharge and damage the battery. So there's a little bit of safety in there where it can only be turned on at 75% or less. Now, the OBD2, I happen to have this one. I'll put a link in the description. I do have an Android phone. I bought two of these. One of them worked. One of them didn't. Luckily, I bought them on Amazon. I was able to take the one that didn't work, and I shipped it back to Amazon. I got it for me. So I'm going to show you how to go through the menus and how to code this to turn on your range extender. But first... I'm gonna show you what the menu looks like once it's been coded. Now, you may buy a BMW i3 from somebody that's already done this, but this next step of going through the menus will show you how to check and see if it's been coded. Now, if it hasn't been coded, you won't even see this in your menu. So, all right, I'm gonna stop the camera here. We're gonna flip it. I'm gonna show you the screen, and show you where it's supposed to show up on the menu set. All right, you can see I'm currently at 88% state of charge. So I'm not going to be able to turn this on quite yet, but I want to show you. You're going to find it on your menu set here. And what we need to do is the selector switch down here. I want to press menu. It's going to bring up my menu here. Now, what I want to do is I want to come and to go through the menu, you would rotate this. That causes, that looks works like a mouse. And then when I get down here to settings, I push, and that enters. You notice here it says departure time, so I'm gonna scroll down two clicks. There's the range extender. Now, if you bought an i3 that was already coded, that's gonna show up. If it's not coded, you won't have this menu. Now, when I click range extender, now notice here it says hold state of charge. Checkbox. It's grayed out because that functionality is not available for me. Now, if I was just to press the button, and it would uh, highlight, check the box, and then my gasoline engine would turn on. And then you would see here, this little indicator tells you when the gasoline engine comes on. Now, whenever I click hold state of charge, that little arrow will jump to wherever my battery percentage is, as long as it's below 75%. And I'm going to show you that once. I'm going to drive around, burn some of this battery up so I can show you. 
then this will go from gray to white to show you it's being used. So why is this important? Well, if you're doing a long road trip or even if you're going someplace where fast chargers aren't readily available and maybe your distance you need to travel is much further than your next travel uh, charging station, you can flip this on so you can actually drive the car normally without having to worry about reduced power and be able to make it to the next charger and charge up or just keep running until the battery gets down to a certain level to where you might want to hit a fast charger. You might be able to complete your trip without having to worry about fast charging. It provides options for you. So I'm going to drive around a little bit. I'm going to burn up some of this battery so I can show you how that changes. One thing I did do that I like, and I'm going to show you here real quick. We'll flip the camera around. It's a really nice feature that you can do uh, that I did that makes it easy. Okay, when I was on the range extender menu, all you have to do is hold down any one of these buttons and you can program it to where that'll flip on the range extender. Now, if you notice, I did mine on number eight. Notice the hold state of charge popped up. Uh, so if I press it, it'll say function not currently available. That's because I'm not down to 75%. I'm at 88%. All right, there you go. You notice the hold state of charge is now available. So I'm going to go ahead and press my number eight here. Oops, I hit seven. Notice it checked. And over here, the carrot jumped over here, and now I'm white, so I'm using the range extender. And I'm slowing down, so it hasn't really kicked in yet. And now as I'm driving, I can hear the gas generator running in the back. So I am now running on gas power. I'm saving. I still have 74.5% state of charge i'm able to drive continuously now if i'm not going too fast if i'm doing inner city i will hold that state of charge at 74.5 percent i'm doing highway driving that state of charge is going to slowly drop because at higher speeds i'm using more power than the generator can actually produce so you do hear a little bit of hum from the engine in the back so you do increase the noise in the cabin of the car. It's not horrible. Uh, at my age, in my years, I can barely hear it, but I can hear it running. I hear it more when I come to a complete stop and it still runs for a few seconds. But it also runs like uh, the auto off cars that you see. They pull up their red light and the engine shuts off. And then when they take off, it starts back up again. This will react in a similar manner. It doesn't just keep running the generator. It will st start, hit, stop. As you stop it, start the car. So that's it. I'm like I said, I'm running. It still says 74.5% for my range or my percentage. And when I slow down and do a regen, it'll go back up to 75%. And it just did. I'm at 75% now as I'm making this turn. I can hear the generator running. This is a good thing. It's working the way it should. So now if I was going on a long trip. I would leave the gas engine on and just run out the gas, stop, fill up, turn the range extender on. One thing to know, you turn the car off, you get back on, the range extender is going to default to its original settings. So you will have to select it again for that range extender to kick on. Now, if you were using this car for, let's say, mail service, delivery service, Amazon uh, associate or whatever, if you're going to do like part-time Amazon work where you're delivering your packages, every time you get out of the car, you get back in the car, you have to turn the range extender on if the battery's still able to charge and you want to use this feature. Uh, kind of wish there was a way you can default it on. Maybe there is through coding. I haven't figured that out yet. I might look into that and maybe do an update video. But right now, that's, again, you dig a long road trip, do that. So let's get into the coding part of the video. Let me show you how to code this. Turn that range extender feature on if you bought a used BMW i3 that has not been coded yet. All right, what I've done is I went ahead and removed my range extender menu set. That way you can see what it's like without it there. And then I'm going to show you how to add it in. 
So I'm going to show you my screen to show you that it is now gone. So here's that same screen. Remember the third one down was range extender? It's gone. This is how a car normally comes. So let's get into Beamer code and Beamer code, however you want to call it. And we're going to show you how to code this thing to make it work properly. Okay, when you open up Beamer code, you're going to have this connect menu. So you're just going to have to click connect. Now these are the different uh, OBD2 connectors you can use. You can see there is quite a bit of them. Um, I ordered two, like I said, uh, this one, the iCar Bluetooth, the VGate iCar, seems to work best for me. So I have that selected. I'm going to hit connect. And connection error. That didn't happen before. There it goes. I wonder if it's because I just coded it and whatever. So now once the connection is established, you have to select the vehicle. Now, obviously, this can be used on several different vehicles within the BMW series. We are using this for a BMW i3. So I'm going to have that selected and hit continue. And I'm going to speed these up so it doesn't take so long. Okay, now that everything is red, we are going to select the head unit. And that is where the range extender menu is. So I'm going to click on head unit. Okay, and these menus all take a while to load. I'm speeding up the video, but just be patient because by the time it reads all the data and displays it on your phone, it's through Bluetooth. I don't know if there's any way to speed that up, but anyway, you're just going to have to have patience. So from here, uh, I'm going to scroll down until I see the range extender menu. Now, right here, you see range extender menu. It says not active. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select the radio button that says active. And I'm going to hit save. Now, if you notice down here at the bottom, it has code and like a little refresh. I'm going to hit that and it's actually going to send the coding data to the car. So I'm going to press that. It's going to give me this warning, let you know that, hey, if you don't know what you're doing, you could screw things up. So I'm going to hit start coding. And now it's going to send the code to the car. And then the dash should flash, turn off the head unit, come back in. That's it. So now let's look at our menu and see if my range extender is back. Okay, so here I'm going to go to my settings. There it is. My range extender menu is back, so I can select it. I can select hold state of charge, and this is what I was talking about earlier. Watch what happens when I hit hold state of charge. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Notice how the little triangle jumped to the current position of the battery percentage, and my range extender is active. Now the gas engine is not going to kick on until I take off, which I'm not going to. So if I turn it off again, watch what happens. It goes gray on the gasoline range and then the triangle move back down to the six and a half and seven percent range there you go hope that helps if you have one that you want to unlock the range extender that's exactly how you do it uh, thanks for watching if you like this stuff don't forget to like share subscribe give me a thumbs up if you would appreciate it all right as always thanks for watching god bless and we'll talk to you soon stay tuned my next one i'm going to show you how to pop the frunk with the key fob